today is about um, a, a new thing Remo 3 has. It's called Boost. And it's going to boost, you know, like 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 getting a boost, like boost up or like enhancement. No, not like a height thing, although I'll be honest with you, being, a, you know, somewhat short, you know, around the kitchen, uh, maybe out in stores. I felt like I could use some kind of a some kind of a boost, whether it's a step ladder or, you know, perhaps someone lifting me up to reach what I have to reach. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Uh, let's face it. Things are on all different levels and some of us, you know, can't reach. Uh, but there's some things I can reach. It all depends on the height in relation to, uh, uh, you know, my five and a half foot frame, which is an, a pretty average height, I would say. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And in today's product spotlight, we're looking at a new feature from Remo 3 called Boost, which is a way to enhance Intune by orchestrating app deployment and phases, all without leaving Intune. Well, I said five, five is like an average height type of thing. Oh, shut up. It is. Solving for the modern workplace. So we're in my Intune tenant, and just like you, I have applications I want to deploy, but it's not as simple as just selecting an application and applying it to a group, right? I, I want to do certain things. So for example, you know, I have Chrome here that's been deployed, and uh, it's already working on a certain number of devices. And in this case, I applied it to just all devices. But typically what happens with an application is you don't want to do that. You, you want to assign it to like a test group first, a pilot group. And then what you want to do is if, if that goes well, you want to schedule a follow up deployment. Right. And, I, you know, I really can't do that here effectively um, inside of Intune. So I can make the app uh, available and tell it when to make itself available, but that's that's not exactly gonna start the deployment on that date for me, right? So that's something, you know, a lot of folks wanna be able to do. And on top of that, uh, what if I wanna do that to a lot of similar apps, right? So on my devices, I might have uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader. Um, let's see, do I have Firefox in here? Yeah, Mozilla Firefox, so maybe I wanna do that. Yeah, this is already, I can't really tell which groups this is assigned to. And uh, if I wanted to do green shot or seven zip, I'm going to have to come into each app and set up those uh, assignments. And then depending, like, let's say I want to do test groups, depending on their success, I come back in and then I go add another group to it. But that's that's a lot of work for me. And if I want to see which groups this was successful for, I would have to look at the devices that say success or not installed or whatever my status is and go correlate that to my assigned groups. Now, as you know, there's really no shortage of third party tools that are out there helping folks using Intune. But something I think is really fascinating here, uh, what Remo3 has done when they showed me this is they didn't make a separate product that you log into and connect to Intune to talk back and forth. They put their new Boost product directly inside of Intune right, um, as an extension in the console to help you orchestrate app deployment and report and monitor on it and, and all that good stuff. So that's what we're gonna take a look at right now. So let me show you how this works here. Uh, you've probably noticed the little tab here. I've had it for some time in my tent and just haven't talked about it yet. So we're gonna click that Remo 3 tab and you can see this pop-up opens right inside of Intune. I don't have to go to another console, which is really nice once you've added it and signed in. Um, so, you know, what's going on in here? So there's applications and deployments, right? And you can see I have some data in here and we'll talk about what that is, but let's blow this up a little bit. So there is a window button. You can make that a bit bigger. Um, basically the way this works is you're setting up deployments as, you know, almost like a job to run. Let's make a, uh, let's make a new deployment. So we're going to click application list and this will show us all our applications. Um, I'm going to do Adobe Acrobat Pro. Right, so let's click new deployment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click new phase deployment, right? Cause we want different phases to this. So the first phase, we're gonna hit create. We're gonna call this Adobe Acrobat Pro Pilot Phase. Um, because this is just gonna be my test group and I wanna trigger it, uh, I wanna schedule it, right? I wanna schedule it for tomorrow. Uh, actually, no, I wanna do it later today. So I wanna do it at uh, 
two o'clock, so 1400 hours. They make it easy by just using the 24 hour time. Uh, we're gonna create that phase and we're gonna give it detail. So which group we want it to. I would like it to go to my app pilot group that I have. It's perfect. Then you're gonna fill out regular settings just like you would any app deployment in Intune, required, available, uh, however you wanna do that. I'm gonna do it required. Um, uh, include mode, filter mode, right? So you could do your filters just like you can in Intune. If you do filters, actually I'll show you. If you do filters, it'll aggregate all your filters for you. So you just pick what you want. Um, uh, that's fine. My group is only corp, so I don't, I don't need the filters. Toast notifications, delivery optimization, and we don't really have to mess with the rest. Uh, so I'm going to hit save for those settings. Next step. And that's perfect, right? So this is going to start later today. I'll hit save the phase. It didn't deploy yet. I would have to click deploy, right? But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make another phase. So I'm going to create a new phase and this is going to be called Adobe Acrobat Broad Phase. So this is going to be uh, scheduled as well. I'm going to schedule this a little bit later. So if I'm doing this today and if everything goes well, Next Tuesday, I want to make this available. Uh, so about, uh, we'll do 9 a.m. I want to create that phase. Uh, it's, you can see it's still going to do the same app. The only difference is I'm going to do it for my broad group. And my broad group is pretty much all corporate users. So um, now here's the thing that's really cool. I want to make this available. So I'm using my test group to say, hey, require it for the pilot group because I'm going to get those and I'll be able to test it with those users. And if all goes well, the following week, I'll automatically have the app made available. All right. So now we see it's set to uh, waiting and that's because we're not at the right time yet. That's fine. We can see uh, that's for today and pro uh, the broad phase is on the 16th. So if we go to our deployment list, we're going to see that's going to stay waiting. I have a paused one here. I have a quick one I did before that's finished. And this is your overall dashboard of everything that's happening. You see, I have one in progress. I have uh, a third of my deployments were successful. And then it and they break down all that data for you right in charts so you can see it. Um, but one thing that's really unique that you can't do anywhere else is I'm going to go back to application list because I want to do what I just did, but for a group or a set of applications, I want to do, uh, I want to do seven zip. I want to do seven zip. I want to do Adobe. I want to do Firefox and I want to do green shot. Uh, perfect. So I have four apps selected and I'm going to click new phase deployment. So for all four apps, I can do the exact same thing. I can hit create phase. Uh, I can call this standard apps and we're going to push this out starting on the 10th and now I'm going to create another phase and I'm going to make them required, but for the broader group. So we're going to do uh, standard apps broad and we're going to schedule that the following week on Wednesday, create the phase. So we have standard apps and standard apps broad. I'm going to hit deploy. And if we look at the details for this, we can see kind of everything we already addressed, right? So we have all four apps. That's the group we're hitting, no filters. And then I'll drop down and broad and we'll look at the same stuff. So it's four apps. It's these two groups, no filters, and they're considered separate deployments. So when I go back, that's a new phase deployment I've set up and I can go back and monitor that. And obviously that's going to wait to run and that'll all factor in on the home page here. So I'll be able to see what I have going on here. So I have a, in this case, out of all my deployments, right? I have one successful, uh, one new one that didn't start yet. I have one that's paused and I paused one before. Um, and then we have an in-progress deployment. You'll be able to monitor that because that'll keep changing as we keep moving forward with our deployments. You know, the fact that this is an extension with it, I think, goes a long way, um, especially in organizations where you, you find you're starting to get tool sprawl and you don't want to keep snapping things into the environment. Um, maybe you have your app, you know, uh, packaging and deployment all settled and that works for you. And you really just need something to help you orchestrate this. So now you have that here. 
Um, it's very easy to get going with it. You add it to the browser, you sign in. Um, I'm going to put the link below where you can where you can go try this for yourself and add it to the tenant and and see if it solves the problem that you have. And let me know your thoughts on something new and unique like this, right? If it, it would help you and what you're doing. Uh, so yeah, hit me up in the Discord and we'll be seeing you.